Welcome! In this video I'm taking a look at this Sunlu Glow-in-the-Dark 3D printer filament. And this is a PLA filament. And if you find this video helpful, I'll put a link in the description to this, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So here's the filament. And this is the second Sunlu filament I purchased. So here's a little flyer with some specs on it. It has some 3D pens, and it also lists their filaments that they make and temperatures you're supposed to use them at and such. And this is a discount for $5 off another roll. And here's the filament. So it has a packet of silica gel. And this is a little tag you're supposed to put on the end of the filament. I don't really use these. I just tuck them into the little holders there. So the way I store my filament is I use these two gallon Ziploc bags and I put them in there with the silica gel and I press the air out. I don't vacuum seal it. There's not going to be that much moisture in the air that's trapped in the bag. If I have a major moisture problem with my PLA, I'll just get a heater for it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is print a temperature tower. So I'm going to get this loaded up in my printer. And I made a previous video on printing a temperature tower, and I'll put a link in the description of my FL Sun playlist, and you can find that video there. So I'll get that started, and then we'll take a look when it's done. Okay, the temperature tower finished printing here, and it looks pretty good. You see a little bit of stringing on the 225 and 220, but the rest of them look really good. And I usually print around 200, and the 200 looks good, so I'm just going to keep printing at 200. But it looks about the same almost at every temperature. I mean, it's very consistent here on this tip, except for the little stringing there. This is probably one of the better filaments I've had. So I'm going to shut the light off and we'll check out the glow-in-the-dark capabilities of this. Okay, so you can probably barely see it right there. I'll charge it up with this light. And there we go. So you can see it doesn't retain the glow-in-the-dark very long. There you go. It is still glowing, but you can't really see it on camera very well. It's a very faint glow. Here, I'll pull it up a little closer. So if you want super good glowing capabilities, you need to have something with, I think it's called strontium aluminum. And it's super expensive. You can buy paints with that in it. So you could 3D print something and paint it to be glow in the dark. So I'll leave that on there for a minute and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, I think that's been about a minute. So here you can see. So it is faintly still glowing. It's hard to say how long that will glow. So I'm going to print a Christmas ornament now and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so it finished printing and this is the star ornament I printed. And I'll put a link below to this on Thingiverse if you want to print one of these yourself. Unfortunately, I don't have a time lapse. I forgot to turn the time lapse on. And I know that's probably the coolest part of a 3D printing video is the time lapse. So I'll try not to make that mistake again. But this is how it came off the plate. I didn't do anything specific for adhesion. I just cleaned it with alcohol before I printed. But to remove this, I just kind of pinched it just a little bit and kind of put my finger in here and broke these little parts loose. And it was still stuck down the middle just a little bit. And I jiggled it and it came loose pretty easily. If it didn't come loose from that, I probably would have sprayed a little alcohol on it and that would have released it. And it printed pretty good, except for right down here, if I can get this on camera, this is supposed to be a circle right here, but the part that was supposed to be down right here didn't quite adhere to the plate, and it kind of stuck to the nozzle, and the nozzle carried it over and dropped it somewhere else. So I removed that from the plate, but it recovered. So when it got to the halfway point, it was able to build the top, and most people would never notice that. But the rest of it came out excellent. I mean, it's super sharp here, it's smooth, and it worked. I didn't have to break this free, it just rotates, like so. So let's get this charged up and take a look at it in the dark. So I'm just going to use my light here. I'll charge that up and I'll shut the lights off. Okay, there it is. So it is glowing right now, but it's not super bright. It's not exactly pitch black where I'm at right now. Maybe I can get a picture of it. I wish I could show on camera how much this is glowing, but it's probably on par with other glow-in-the-dark things that you have. But I'm guessing this is going to be similar to any other brand of glow-in-the-dark PLA. So I wouldn't expect this to illuminate an area. Otherwise, the action on this is really smooth. Everything else is nice on it. So I printed this just on the glass bed. I cleaned it with alcohol before I started. And to release this, I just squeezed it just a little bit around here. And it was still stuck in the middle a little bit. So I wiggled that and it came right loose. 
and I didn't have to break this free. It would rotate right off the bed. So I like this filament for what it is. If you're looking for a glow-in-the-dark PLA, I would recommend this. Don't have expectations that this is going to glow for hours after you charge it up, though. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.